Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Dying the Cube and by show of hands, show of hands. How many of you think about backups? I'll wait. No one, I guarantee you, no one does. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you why backing up your data set is so important. Stay tuned, back it up. If you find this for the very first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date from all the videos from both Adam and this guy. So you're probably thinking, Patrick, why are you talking about backups? Probably as a SaaS service. I don't need to back up anything. Microsoft handles all the HA and DR. There's so much resiliency built in the Power BI. I don't have to worry about it. Well, Microsoft handles everything that's there. But what if somebody deletes the data set? What if someone modifies some DAX in the model? What if they delete a measure with lots of complicated DAX? And it's not intentional, it's just a mistake. Or maybe, maybe they are being malicious. What do you do? How do you get this back? Maybe you're not doing version control. How many are you doing version control? Probably not many people. How do you get that information back? Well, if you had a backup, you can just restore it. And that's what I'm gonna do in this video. All right, before we get started, you will need premium or premium per user for this. I know a lot of people go, oh, Patrick, you should have said it at the beginning. I'm saying it now. So you guys know what I like to do. Instead of all this talking, let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. To get started with this, the first thing you need to do is make sure you enable large models. You can enable a large model at the workspace level. So if you go to workspace, choose premium, you see where it says default storage format, you can turn it on for all of the models or you can do it at the data set level. If you go to the settings, you'll see down here, it says large data set storage. And so I've turned it on for this particular data set. So now you have premium, you got premium per user, one of those, and you haven't enabled large models. And let's say this happens, so someone in your organization, they're using Power BI, they're using one of the great reports that you built. And so they go and open the report and they see this and they call you over and they say, hey, Patrick, this report was working yesterday. Why is it not working? And you go click on see details and it says, hey, something's wrong with one or more fields. And you go, oh, hang on one second, hang on one second. This. So you head back over, you'll look at the data model, click it, let's say create a report and you go over and you look for freight. It was right there. You search for it. Hmm, it's not there. What do you do? Maybe there's lots of DAX in that total freight measure. If you're not doing version control or you're not making copies of the, the data set, how do you get it back? Well, if you're taking backups, then you can just restore that backup. So let me show you how to set all this stuff up for your backup. The first thing you need to do is you head over to Azure and you create a storage account. You need to ensure that hierarchical namespace is enabled. And then whoever's going to set this up or even yourself, you need to make sure that you explicitly give them access to this resource. And you need to give them these two permissions, owner of this resource and storage blob data contributor. Once you do that, you head over to the workspace and you go to settings and you choose Azure connections and you expect and storage and then you choose connect to Azure. Then you choose that subscription, it's gonna provide your resource group and then you choose your storage and you click save. Now it's connected to an Azure storage account and now all you need to do is run your backup. The easiest way is to use Management Studio. So what you do is open up Management Studio, you connect to your XMLA endpoint, you go connect, analysis services, pop your endpoint in, choose MFA, put your username in and click connect. I've already done that. Expand your databases out and then find that database. Here's the model, right click on it and choose backup. And you'll see some options when this window opens. For old school people that's been working with SQL Server forever, this is nothing new to them. I'm not gonna encrypt this backup. You can encrypt it if you want. Not sure if you can encrypt it. I haven't tried that. I'll have to try that out. So I'm gonna allow file overwrite and I'm gonna say apply compression. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say from from SSMS, so I'll know where it's coming from. And I click OK. This will run for a little bit, and then I'm gonna head back over to my storage account. Now, when you do the initial backup, you go over to containers. What Power BI is gonna do is gonna create a Power BI backup container for you. And within that container, any backup that you do, it's gonna create a folder for that workspace. So in my case, I'm going to my videos workspace, so you see right here. And then you can see right there, just a few minutes ago, it's a little late, right? It's 7.30, and there is the data model that I backed up. And now you may be 
thinking, are you kidding me? I gotta use Management Studio? Can we automate this? Can we use something like Azure Automation and Webhooks and schedule this or Data Factory or something like that? And of course you can. I'm not gonna walk you through the whole automation process. I'm gonna show you how you can write a PowerShell script using a service principle and you could do it there. Then you could take that and level it up using some type of automation in Azure. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Before you do this, you need to head over to your Azure subscription, go into Azure Active Directory, look for app registrations and you're going to create a new app registration when you create that new app registration you want to capture the application id the tenant id and then over on certificates and secrets you want to click there and you want to create a new secret and be sure to copy that value so you need the tenant id the application id and this value from the secret if you want to use certificates and azure key vault you can do that also adam actually has a video where he talks about creating this app registration so you should go check that video out and he walks through but there's one more important thing one more important thing that you need to remember when you create this endpoint there's an option to add a redirect URI you need to make sure you add that redirect URI and put any old URL in there it doesn't matter okay after you do that you need to head over to the admin portal and in the admin portal you need to make sure that you allow service principles to use read only power bi admin APIs you need to enable that and then you can explicitly add a group if you notice right here this says specific specific security groups. We already have a service principal security group. Now, these app registrations that I created, what you wanna do is, once you create them, you wanna go back over to Azure Active Directory. I found groups, and what I did was, I found it, and I added my XMLA endpoint as a member of this group. And then once I do that, I'll come over here and make sure that I've added this group to this particular setting right here. Then you head over to your workspace, and in your workspace, you want to grant either the group or the endpoint and the minimum contributor access to this workspace. And you can see I made them all admins. Once you do all that, you can use this PowerShell script, and I'll share this PowerShell script in the comments below. You can see right here, you need to provide the base for the XMLA endpoint, then the workspace, then the database you wanna back up, and then the app ID, the app secret, and the tenant ID. So you provide all those things, and then I handle the rest down here. And you can see this is a simple backup script, and then I use the invoke AS command to connect to that endpoint, run that query, pass in all the information and telling, hey, I'm using the service principle. And so I have a script here that's that everything's populated on. It's kind of hidden. I'm going to go ahead and run this. It's running my backup for me. So you can see it's finished. If I head back over to my container and just choose refresh, you'll see there's one for today. Now, how do I restore? Same thing. I head back over to my notebook over here in Azure Data Studio. I provide the base, the workspace, the database, and then the backup file name. And then I provide the app ID, the app secret, the tenant ID. Very very similar things but then I have a restore script and so right here I have one with all the stuff populated I don't want you to see all the things I'm using because I'm not going to delete that one go ahead and run this it's actually performing that restore for me of that database in my workspace so now if I go back to my report let's go look for the report let's run it and let's see what happens boom it's fixed total freight total quantity period over period percent change it all works just because I restored it just because I decided to start backing up my database all right what do you guys think are you backing up your database Database. Are you interested in backing up your database? Does this help? Does this help a little bit? I'd love to know. Let's continue the conversation. Where? In the comments below. If it's your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, give me a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.